So the first thing you're going to want to do is think about what your interface provides. And as the example I use in a phone, you at least need access to a keypad. So what you do is you go edit new class, and I'm going to call this freezable. And where you're going to find it is at the very bottom where it says other classes. And when you open that up, you basically want to take the whole thing and chuck it. Now, all you're going to do in Java is say what this interface requires. So public interface freezable. So this is what I'll tell you a freezable character can do. OK, and now this is different from other methods you've done because I don't actually write any code in here. It's not my job as the interface designer to figure out how to do it. My job is to tell you what to do. If you would like to call yourself freezable, you have to tell me how to do this. So I'll show you how we can, we can actually implement it. So I'm going to go in. You could edit existing code, but I think I've mentioned this. It's always best if you subclass things. That way you leave the previous behavior alone. This moving brick, I'm going to call it a freezing brick. It is a moving brick that can also freeze. So it'll do everything that the parent can. This is where it'll differ, though. So I'm going to put in the stuff uh, that would make it freeze. So I have a private int um, counter. And I'm going to also need a constructor. And I'll set the counter at uh, 0 to start, I suppose. Now, this is where I'm going to change and add a little bit of extra Java that we'll start plugging in this interface. We'll talk about how this counter works in a minute here. But this is the extra piece that you tell Java. You say this is going to implement Freezable. So what this extra piece of code says is it says to Java, I will do what freezable things can. What is it? It freezes for a certain amount of frames. You can have more than one method. That's fine. You can add extra things in here, whatever you want those freezable things to do. But this is where you actually have to do the work of coding it. So what I have to do down here is make a method that matches the one in that file. It has to have the same signature. So that way when Java goes looking, it'll say, oh, if you implement freezable, you have to have a method named freeze, and then it'll say, okay, everything's fine, they've done it. It doesn't actually make sure you've done it properly, of course. Maybe that's the next version of computer code and, and languages. It, it just checks to make sure you've done uh, a method. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that um, my counter is going to take on this value. And here's how the difference in acting will happen when you're frozen. What I will say is if the counter is less than or equal to zero, then super.act. Otherwise, decrement it. So what's happening is it starts at zero, which means it's going to get to act freely. But when somebody calls freeze on it for a certain amount of time, like let's say I said freeze 100, then it won't be able to act like a parent because the value is 100, and it will start decrementing it until it gets back down to zero. So this is um, one way of implementing that behavior of freezing an actor for a, a small amount of time. So if I compile this, what I'll do is, right now the brick is moving, and I'll show you what happens with freeze. So I'll let it move a little further forward just so it's on screen. OK, so I'm going to say here, <clears throat> um, 
Where is my set speed? Oh, I, I know why. Sorry. It's because I'm looking for that freezing brick. My apologies. That was a moving brick. So I'll show you the difference. Okay. So there's my um, freezing brick. The freezing brick, however, I'm going to say please freeze for 25 frames. So now I'll just let it happen so you can see when I run it, it, well, either that was 25 frames or that was, uh, let me just uh, try something longer here just to make sure. Okay, so it is actually frozen. 25 just might not have been a good way to start it. But that brick actually froze for the count given. The count might have been better though if I picked something else. So what I could do is, for example, I can make a new character in my game. And in this point, I just want to demonstrate a little, um, just a little idea to plant in your head. So if I touch this thing, this is a freeze pack, okay? So all it is is it represents what it looks like when you touch these things that make it freeze. So I'm gonna now tell my player that it should uh, allow things to freeze. So where's my act method here? Okay, so here's my act method. Um, I'll just say if is touching the freeze class, then you should be able to freeze those objects. So we're going to make a new method. And in this method, I'm going to use some of the green foot uh, classes. So I'm going to need the list and the list iterator. Okay, so down here, um, list of type freezable. So this is where the interface comes in handy. Now I can yell out in Java, everybody who's from the freezable interface, anyone that can be frozen, kind of like when you say, does anyone have a phone I can borrow? You, again, you expect the phone interface to show up. You don't really care what brand it is that you're using. So get the list of freezable by calling on the world. to get objects of the freezable class. And now what I'm going to do is traverse through all these actors, telling them to freeze. So this might, what it, might be what it looks like. And now I'm going to ask that as long as there is a next iterator, then going to go and get that one. And in Java, this could be any object from any class as long as it implements the freezable interface. Java will only then let you do things that freezable objects can do. So you, in this case, you only have access to one method. You only have access to this method. You could put more in, but that's all you can do. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. So even though in my game, I know that this is the freezing brick and I could do things to it that bricks do, that would be an error because Java only knows that it's freezable. So I can only do things on it like this. F dot freeze for um, 200 frames. Okay, So what again this will do, this method, 
It will take all freezable actors, go through them with the list iterator, and each time it finds one, it will tell that actor to freeze for 200 frames. So maybe this is a pack that when it hits, you grab all those actors and you get this sort of bonus time where there's no danger to you because everyone's frozen. So let's just have a go at it and see what um, happens in the world when I do this. So I'll, I'll just run it here. I got to stick a freeze brick in. And I'll stick this little HP freeze. Uh, right here. Okay, so nothing's happening. It's, it's allowed to move. But then as soon as I jump on it, it's frozen. The 200 frame. Oh, I'm still touching it. Sorry. <laughs> Now it's going again. So that would be like my bonus time. It's frozen. And it would go again. Of course, you'd want to remove that little barrel so you couldn't keep repeating that bonus behavior. But that's one way that you could implement a feature using interfaces. So I will have some suggestions for you to use as far as um, what's in your code. Another interesting one um, is to get objects in range. If you haven't looked at the documentation for that, um, I guess I might as well pull it up with you. But uh, if you look at the actor class, this behaves a little bit more like, uh, for example, a bomb would, if a bomb went off. Or if you just want to use an, uh, uh, a bonus pack, which has a limited view. So mine goes through the entire uh, world, grabs every possible actor. This one here, you can see get objects in range. If you give it a radius, then that'll only affect actors close to you. So if you want to implement, like, what's it like when a, a grenade would go off, then a grenade should have a fixed range, get objects within the range. Maybe you make an interface called um, has health. If it implements has health, then a grenade takes health away. So having health means you can get health added and have health taken away. Find out if there's any health left, all those kind of things. But it doesn't matter which actor you're talking about or class, because they will have to implement the interface themselves. So anyway, that's lots. But again, this hopefully gives you some ideas of how to add some extra features. I'll post this up for you to have a peek at.